But the problem is that when you're taking alcohol regularly, your cell kind of gets used to that right. and is not able to really learn how to burn fats and sugars. Hi everyone, Dr. Goyle from Peak Human Labs and back by popular demand, we have another video we're doing on alcohol and the effects on health. Yes. Oh my gosh. There's been a lot of talk about alcohol and it's been, not the benefits of alcohol, but the health benefits of not having alcohol. That's right. And I wanted you to have this conversation because I also tried it on and we are sort of at the end of January and I myself am feeling so many incredible impacts of not having alcohol in my regular diet as I had in the past. So if we can just get right into it, I have prepared a few questions. And let's start with just the history of alcohol. How is alcohol found in nature? Mm -hmm. And secondly, as far as Sanjeev, how long have humans been drinking alcohol? Yeah, so basically alcohol is not really a part of normal foods. Like probably our hunter-gatherers were not having alcohol. And it really started because it's a byproduct of fermentation. So probably when humans started to be agriculturists, like farmers, their grains started getting fermented and they must have discovered the effect of alcohol and started using alcohol in actual in oral form, like taking it in probably for social reasons. So it might have been accidental, you think? I don't know if it's <laughs> accidental, but they must have eaten fermented foods and, re and got some of the effects of alcohol and, and it became, became a thing. But I, before that, there was really no place where alcohol is found in food, right. per se. It's only found in fermented foods. Yeah, so alcohol is a process. Like, it doesn't come in natural. There's no natural form alcohol. It's a That's result right. of... A fermentation. Fermentation, yes. okay. so food sitting around, and usually that was happening with farmers as they were storing their grains or storing crops. Mm -hmm. Food would get fermented. And that right. doesn't happen out in the wild. Food doesn't get fermented. I mean, crops get fermented. Well, that leads me to, to ask the next question because, I mean, we talked also a segment on diet. How is alcohol then metabolized by the body? Mm -hmm. if, it's not a nat if it's not a natural form, and mm -hmm. my understanding and the research that we talked about, it's not an easy thing on the body. So how is it metabolized? Mm -hmm. We did go a little bit into that last time, but I want to go into more detail because okay. I thought this is interesting to our viewers out there. So basically, there are three pathways of, for alcohol to be metabolized. And the first step is converting alcohol to acetaldehyde. Okay. And acetaldehyde is then converted by a next step into acetate. So, so there's three ways that alcohol moves from alcohol to acetaldehyde. Okay. And that is yeah, either through this uh, enzyme called alcohol dehydrogenase. Okay. Second step is an enzyme called catalase. Okay. And then the third step is an enzyme in the liver in the P450 system called CYP. 2E1. So those three mechanisms are the three ways that alcohol converts over to this middle metabolite, which is a carcinogen. I think I may have mentioned that yeah. before. So, and then this acetaldehyde moves over to uh, acetate, which is completely innocuous and not toxic, but it requires another enzyme, aldehyde dehydrogenase, as to move over to the next stage. Wow, that sounds. Now, like I know it's it's a lot. It, it's a lot. It's a lot to to, <laughs> to think about. But I think what's interesting here is that by looking at the metabolism, we can basically see how does alcohol affect the cells. And I think that was what I really want to bring out in today's episode. Right. Was that it has all these effects on the cell because the cell has to metabolize. Okay. Alcohol. Well, there's a lot of different um, impacts. So speaking about how it metabolizes, what are the impacts to the liver? Yeah. So the liver is the primarily the detox organ. Okay. So basically, this alcohol dehydrogenase is found primarily in different organs in greater amounts and lesser amounts. So it's it's very much found in liver cells. It's found in muscle cells, heart, and brain. So that's primarily where this enzyme is residing. So the liver is one of those organs that takes the big responsibility of doing the detox. Okay. And so what happens is that 
the ethanol or alcohol is taken up by the cell. So ethanol can get into all the tissues of the body very easily. That's one of the things about it. And what it does is that it sends a signal, like our cells are always looking one of the primary functions of our cells is to understand, is there food around? Is there energy? That's called nutrient sensing. The idea that, is there a lot of food around or is there no food around? That's right. kind of the question. The, the cell's always asking this question. So when there's alcohol around, it basically sends a signal that there's a lot of energy. It's an energy-rich time. So then what happens is that the cells send a signal that we don't need to you know, we have a lot of energy going on right now. We don't need to take up, we don't need to worry. We got so much energy to deal with that we can just focus on alcohol, on metabolizing alcohol, and okay. the cell's not worried. So, for example, if we're doing a lot of exercise or we're fasting or we're, we're in a low oxygen environment, the cell's going to sense a different type of stress. And, right. and that stress of having no energy around sends off different pathways. It okay. activates different pathways. And that pathway is called the AMPK pathway. Okay. So this pathway is normally activated when we are fasting or when we're doing exercise or we're in low oxygen environments. But when there's alcohol <clears throat> around, that pathway is actually getting depressed, meaning there's lots of energy around. Okay. Well, the mm -hmm. what is the impact then to... Yeah. your muscles because mm -hmm. I know that with the liver mm -hmm. it's doing a lot of work taking these poisons like mm -hmm. carcinogens mm -hmm. again like you said it's not a natural thing that's found it's it's processed so yeah. what's the impact to alcohol on the muscle the same thing is happening is that when these cells see alcohol around they are focusing on metabolizing the alcohol and they are saying we don't need to worry about taking up glucose and we don't need to worry about burning fats we just need to worry about burning alcohol mm -hmm. using alcohol for energy but the problem is that when you're taking alcohol regularly your cell kind of gets used to that right. and is not able to really learn how to burn fats and sugars right. and so the cell becomes in a chronic low energy state and i'm going to come back to like how it affects the brain because it's kind of similar well that was my but net, basically yeah. yeah this the the effect on the muscle is that it will lead to a decrease in performance of the muscle yeah i don't know anybody and that's that chronic, uh, works that's, out drunk <laughs> in effect it has the yeah, effects on on and coming back to the liver i really want to just point this out is that how does fatty liver happen is that when the AMPK pathway is suppressed then it sends a signal that we don't need to burn any fats for energy and we don't need to burn it make any glucose from fats and so when that happens what gets turned on is fat storage because mm. there's so much energy so the body's like let's just store all our fat and remember that alcohol is does have calories. It's not like it's not it does not it innocuous that extra calories are coming in from alcohol. They're like in effect empty calories. They have yeah. no nutritional value. And it's basically telling the rest of the cell, go ahead and start storing fats. And so those fatty acids are being basically stored into triglycerides, which then form around the cells, mm -hmm. basically ca causing fat to accumulate around those fat cells and that's what's causing the fatty liver the fibrosis we talked about right. and, and then cirrhosis well, well that's uh, in my my own personal um, experience mm -hmm. removing the alcohol has allowed me to see in my opinion and in your as a friend and physician mm -hmm. a much a, a more drastic change to my body type because I don't have to fight alcohol that wants to store my fat. Exactly. Right? That's that's the critical point I right? really want to let the viewers understand. So they wonder how does this happen? It's happening at the cellular level. Your ce your cell is basically getting a signal when you're taking alcohol that I have all this energy here. I'm not going to worry. I'm not going to start burning fat because I got all this alcohol around and it's actually damaging to the cells processes in the long run of how to deal with these energy s systems. Right. Uh, so it's quite interesting. And uh, as we move over to the brain. Yeah, let's talk about the brain. And I want to talk about the brain because I know 
that also in eliminating alcohol from my social activities and just from regular ingestion, mm -hmm. I experience less what they call brain fog. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I'm older now, so I'm going to have natural brain fog. I've had children, but I'm, I, I think I'm experiencing a lot more uh, clarity, less stress when I'm going to an event because I know the outcome is I'm getting home safe. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't have to worry about imposing myself on other people who would normally have taken care of my brain that wasn't functioning. Like, what is the, we all know some of the impacts of the brain, of alcohol on the brain. Mm -hmm. So, what can you tell me about how is the brain using or not using alcohol? What is the impact there? Sure. So, first of all, alcohol, again, these receptors for metabolizing alcohol are found in certain parts of the brain. The cerebellum, which deals with balance, hippocampus, which deals with fear and anxiety. So you can see how these things all connect now, how right. alcohol has effects on certain parts of the brain. Oh yeah, because your balance is gone. Totally that's why affected, they do the right? that's why that's they right. do in sobriety tests yeah, exactly. for your balance. And, and we know that it stimulates what we call the dopaminergic pathway, which is the reward pathway. And so that's why people have this sense of feeling good mm. after taking alcohol. The other thing is that it actually suppresses the what I call the the glutaminergic pathway, which means it 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 makes the anxiety lower. Remember we talked about temporarily though, yeah, right? It's, all it's temporary. a temporary. Yeah. But while you're taking the alcohol, you feel less anxious, right? Because that GABA pathway is being increased. Remember we mentioned that. Yes. And and so what's happening is the ga dopamine's going up. GABA is going, up, is going up, and that's making you more relaxed, less anxious, and more happy. So, so there's a lot of use of the word impairment. Mm -hmm. So what is it in the alcohol that actually impairs judgment, vision, balance? When people take alcohol, mm -hmm. they just seem to alter their, their mood and behavior, right? And is that because the cells are working so hard like they're introducing a foreign body to their brain? Well, the, you know, basically, the, when there's, I think what's happening here is that the, the neurons aren't working as well. There's la less function. And, and maybe it's going to come back to what I want to talk to you next is that the brain cells, what's happening, the same thing is happening where they're so focused on dealing with the alcohol, like metabolizing alcohol, that they're not able to take up glucose. And glucose mm. is the energy fuel for these brain cells. Right. So there's been shown that alcohol metabolism is bringing down the uptake of glucose into these brain cells, into these okay. neurons. And so it's leading to a low energy state. And so this low energy state is what's contributing to these neurons not functioning well and to the lack of judgment and impairment and, and so on and so forth. And lack of like dehydration. Right? Isn't that's, that a... That's another yeah piece. But I think this impairment is really true to the neurons not being able to function well. Okay. And that's due to a low energy state that's occurring because all the energy of that cell is focused on metabolizing alcohol. Okay. I wrote down this question I wanted sure. to ask you. Acute ingestion versus changes to the body from chronic ingestion. Yeah. I think that's a good point. Yeah. So, I, basically, body can handle once in a while using alcohol like you can this you metabolize the alcohol you come right back to the way you used to metabolize sugars and fats and not not a problem but this chronic like when you start taking alcohol on a daily basis the cell starts to change and changes in the way that proteins are made the way that your uh, dna is expressed and the cell's energy system changes okay. over time. It means that you're not able to burn fat the same way you used to as w when you're using only once in a while. Okay, so we talked a little bit about GABA, but I wanted a deeper explanation. Mm -hmm. How does alcohol stimulate GABA and dopamine? Right. And what does that actually mean? Yeah, so I was mentioned to... Uh, alcohol stimulates a dopamine pathway, which leads to a reward, reward feeling, a pleasurable mm -hmm. response. And that's what leads to probably the psychological um, dependency dependence yeah. f that, uh, that alcohol brings because d dopamine is the reward pathway. Yes. And then with the GABA, similar to how sleeping pills work, benzodiazepine 
uh, medications. Uh, it stimulates the GABA pathway, which uh, provides a anxiety-reducing effect on the brain. And one interesting thing I want to bring up is that there's a medication out there that we give to help people with cravings called naltrexone. And it's a type of opioid medication. And that medication seems to blunt the response of the dopamine means that it takes away some of the effect of the dopamine when you're drinking alcohol. And that's why this medication seems to have an effect on helping people with reducing alcohol use. So are they taking it before a night out or are they taking uh, it for a hangover? It tends to work. You have to usually take this medication on a daily basis for a month or so. For chronic alcohol yeah, users. Yeah, and it helps okay. to reduce the cravings. And the reason it seems to be working is that it's it's kind of dampening the effect, the, the dopamine effect. It means that mm. it's making the dopamine not as strong. So you're getting less pleasurable response by drinking alcohol. I get that. Yeah. So that's yeah, because I mean, most people just like relationships. They're going to want to spend more time and do things that make them happy. Mm -hmm. And if people are associating the impact of alcohol and feeling good as an escape tool or reward, yeah, they're just going to want because then they forget people. They're either pain avoiders or pleasure seekers. I think there's that's, a lot of pleasure seekers out there. That's the basics of life. We're yeah. always trying to move towards pleasure or avoid pain and avoid pain. All our cells are always trying to do that all the time. It's our cells are always trying to move towards more energy mm -hmm. and get away from stressful places. Yes. So. Well, in our previous episode, Dr. Sanjeev asked me four questions. The what was the you don't have to ask me all four questions, but That's what was right. the name of that test again? It's called the Cage Questionnaire. Right. Cut down. Annoy. Do you feel guilt? And do you have an eye opener? I think again, people can ask themselves those questions. If any of like three out of four, or four out of four are positive, definitely get, consider yeah. getting some help or continue your journey towards cutting down alcohol. I yeah. think if, for those out there, I hope this is motivation for continuing your dry, uh, dry January and hopefully going to dry February. Absolutely. And so far for me, I have to say, thumbs up. Like everything's been great. I haven't had the cravings. And uh, I'm really looking forward to continuing my alcohol-free lifestyle for as, as much as possible. I'm not saying never, but uh, especially our conversations have been very motivating for me to continue on that path. So, yeah, thank you for watching. And our, and also, if you go to peakhuman.ca uh, forward slash rewards, we do have a rewards membership and allows you to have extra discounts on some of the incredible supplements for brain health. It's considering if you've done some damage to the brain, I think mm -hmm. it would be some a good option. Yeah. Any last words? Just out there that it's not a simple thing to just ask people to to stop alcohol and, and you can get symptoms of withdrawal mm -hmm. and if you are getting those please seek medical attention it again it's, it is related to the chronic changes that happen in the energy systems uh, of the cells right. and too quick an insult too quick a stopping of alcohol will lead to like a rebound symptoms of withdrawal and sometimes they say the best uh, the best treatment for hangover is having another drink. Mm. Yeah. But that's not the kind of the way we'd, we'd want. There are other sure. ways to kind of help you to get through that hangover and get you through the withdrawal symptoms. Absolutely. We hope this was helpful and that you try it on as much as possible and see what impacts, what positive impacts you can report. And if you have other questions, please uh, put them down in the comments. I hope you like this video. Please like and subscribe. It goes a long way to making sure this content gets up at the top of everyone's feed and helping other people who are trying to reduce their alcohol consumption and understand the effects of alcohol on their health. So again, like and subscribe. Thank you so much.